You know, that song, <clears throat> that song brings to mind um, Proverbs 31, 8 through 10, and it says, open your mouth for the speechless in the calls of all who are appointed to die. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. How needy is an unborn child? Giving a voice to those who cannot speak for themselves. Standing up for righteousness and giving hope for the hopeless. That has become my passion. If you would have told me three years ago that I would be up on stage publicly in front of people talking about my abortion experience, I would have said, you were nuts. There's no way, no way. Three years ago, I couldn't even say the word abortion out loud. I was walking around a wounded soul and I had no understanding the depth of my hurt and pain. I also had no idea that God was preparing me for an amazing spiritual journey. And my life journey begins with a place for women. I can vividly remember one Sunday morning, I was sitting in the seats of this church. I know exactly where I was in the middle right there. And I was about seven or eight months pregnant, so I had a nice little belly. And my husband was next to me on my left. There was a presentation on abortion that day in church. I was beyond shocked. It was unbearable for me to sit through. I remember running, well, more like waddling because I had like the belly and stuff, but I remember in tears in the ladies' room, in tears. Something was triggered in my heart. I was running from the truth. And looking down at my pregnant belly, the tears were falling. It made it only more real as I reflected on my horrific past filled with guilt, shame, condemnation, and bondage. See, my, my life has been a pretty bumpy road, entangled with all kinds of hurt and deception, violation, mental, physical, verbal, and sexual abuse. And that road led to more and more sorrow when I made the decision to have two abortions within 10 years while I was in my 20s. I took my first baby's life when I was in an abusive marriage. <clears throat> I took my second baby's life when I was single, living a very wild, promiscuous lifestyle. Years later, I gave my heart to Christ, <clears throat> but I still suffered. I suffered in silence, not fully understanding how these two separate events, the fact that I aborted two babies, affected my life and my Christian walk. Even after I proclaimed Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I still carried heaviness in my heart. I was introduced to a place for women through our church. And I began to hear more and more about this pro-life ministry as time went on. And I felt a kind of tugging at my heart to take that step of faith and try out their abortion recovery Bible study entitled, Forgiven and Set Free. Sounded pretty good. Fulfilling that call to participate in that abortion recovery study was extremely difficult. Oh, my thoughts were flooded with all sorts of fear, fear of judgment, fear of the unknown, fear of facing the truth, and fear of not being able to bear the pain associated with it. I literally thought that if I opened this door that had been bolted shut so tightly for more than a decade, I thought I would not be able to control the amount of pain that would rush through. I, I literally thought I was gonna die. I thought it would hurt so much I would die. But I've never been so glad to be wrong in all my life. 
what I found was the, the complete opposite. I was enraptured by a loving, nurturing environment. And the lengths that these women go through in order to create a safe and secure environment to protect the women that come through their doors is astounding to me. Amazing. The facilitators are so empathetic and knowledgeable and totally non-judgmental. I was able to fellowship with other women who actually went through similar experiences. And for the first time, the first time in my life, I knew I wasn't alone. I had other sisters linking arms with me, encouraging me, loving me, and accepting me. And they displayed the true love and grace and compassion of our Lord Jesus Christ. The abortion recovery study was life-changing in itself. It was eye-opening and it just made sense to me. Was it challenging? Oh, yes, it was extremely challenging in more ways than one. Was it difficult facing the decisions that I made in my past? Yes. There were times I didn't even want to go, but I knew I had to. Was it worth it? Yes. It was so worth it. It was so worth it, I took it twice. <laughs> Personally, I needed it twice. Does that say anything about how messed up I was or what? I don't know. What I took from the first abortion recovery study was knowing who God was and knowing about his characteristics. I learned of his unconditional love for me, despite myself and my circumstances. Most of all, I learned about his forgiveness. I learned that he forgave me for all my sins, all my sins. You know, not just this one or that one. I got some whoppers. He, all of them. He forgives me for all of them. Even my abortions. And it was heart-wrenching coming to that gnawing realization that I took my baby's life, two babies. And through the guidance of the abortion recovery study, I was able to give my babies the dignity and respect that they deserve and I no longer carried the burden of the guilt, shame, and condemnation. I walked in God's loving grace. But God's plan wasn't finished yet. When he directed me to take the abortion recovery the second time, I knew there was still more healing, but I didn't really know how or what. And after I was complete, as I was completing the second abortion recovery study, it became very clear that while I had received God's forgiveness for my sins, I didn't forgive myself. And that was a huge revelation to me. I was still in bondage, chains that I kept on myself. Picture a jail cell, right? You have the bars, you're locked up, you can't get out, you're stuck. And our sins keep us locked up in jail, in bondage. But when we ask God to forgive us, he unlocks the door, right? And when I ask God to forgive me for my two abortions, I know that he unlocked the door. But I didn't leave. I was hanging out in my cell. The door opened, hey guys, I'm hanging out. I didn't, I didn't leave. Instead, I lived in a cell, in my own prison. I wasn't completely free until I forgave myself. I had to actually walk out of the door which God had opened. And through the second abortion recovery study, I learned how to walk out of the cell. And it was then that I became completely forgiven and set free. And John 8, 36 says, therefore, if the Son makes you free, you are free indeed. And hallelujah, I am free. I am free. I can stand before you and say that. Amen. See, the pain of my abortion, it never really goes away. It's there. 
but it subsides. And I believe it keeps me compassionate and sensitive to others who are going through the same thing. But I now have hope. Hope in my Lord Jesus Christ. Hope that I will see my babies in heaven one day again. I will. I know it. And hope in knowing that I serve a loving, forgiving, and selfless God. A place for women through their obedience to the one true God, their love and compassion for hurting men and women, and their unfailing desire to save babies has given me the most precious of gifts. The first one, the means to draw closer to my Lord and Savior. Secondly, the gifts of friendship, support, and love. To save just one, just one baby, it's worth it to heal just one heart, one heart, one. It's worth it. All of this, it's worth it. Because Jesus would have went to the cross for just one. It's worth it. The forgiven and set free Bible study and the power of God had changed my life. And I just wanna thank all the donors who support a place for women, and I'd really like to encourage new donors to support a place for women because my life has truly been forever changed. And I thank you, and God bless you. Thank you.